The initial part of this video captures the assembly of emergency services officers and firefighters at a particular location. A 911 call had reported a man unconscious in his car near a McDonald's drive through Upon the officer's arrival, the man was found slumped over in his car, secured by a seatbelt and unconscious. It was evident that he had consumed a significant amount of alcohol, having passed out with his foot on the brake and holding a foam container. Due to the car still being in drive, precautionary measures were taken by positioning vehicles in front and behind to prevent the car from moving unintentionally. Using a tool, they shattered the car window, providing swift access to the vehicle. Unfortunately, the use of emergency tools for extraction was unnecessary. Although the man was slow to regain consciousness, he appeared generally willing to stand up and follow the officers. His drowsiness raised uncertainty about the duration of his unconsciousness. Around 50,000 fans had gathered at the Orange Stage during the Roast Killed Festival in 2000, primarily to witness a performance by the band Pearl Jam. However, amidst the anticipation, the lead singer addressed the crowd. On the count of three, three steps back, please. One, two, three. One, take a step back. Two, take a step back. Three, please. Revealing that security had detected a potentially perilous situation unfolding near the front of the stage. Many fans were surging forward possibly aiming to get closer to the performers and the excitement. In their quest for a prime spot, the crowd inadvertently trampled on others who had slipped on the wet ground in front of the arena, given that rain had fallen the night before and saturated the floors. Observing the vast crowd tightly packed together and pushing towards the front, one could grasp the potential harm caused by the surge. A poignant moment unfolded as a band member fell to his knees, tears streaming down his face, clutching his visage in disbelief at the unfortunate incident that had just transpired at the venue. It's a scene that might tug at your heartstrings as well. A presence manifested itself to a friend within the confines of this haunted house. Subsequently, the YouTuber Theo Ferraco, accompanied by his partner Thais, revisited the location in an attempt to unveil the mysterious occurrences. Little did they anticipate the unfolding events. As they utilized their K2 meter, registering anomalous readings, the reason behind it soon became apparent. Diego ventured into a room, only to find it devoid of any apparent presence. Despite an exhaustive search, yielding no results, they were startled by a loud banging noise emanating from above. There is an undeniable sense that the malevolence looms nearby. Whatever entity is present seems poised to draw you into its ominous sphere. The crew of Lost History navigated through the partially flooded remains of this aging bunker, perpetuating the exploration of wartime vaults. Although waterlogged and deteriorating, it harbored more than just moisture. Within the confines of the old brick walls and crumbling structures, numerous discarded gas masks lay strewn about, accompanied by rusted metal and mold. The unsettling thought of individuals possibly being in the bunker when it flooded is haunting, but it's more plausible that the items were discarded and a pipe rupture occurred much later. The former Millionaire's Club, known as the Old Washoe Club in Virginia City, Nevada, carries a somber history that has given rise to significant paranormal occurrences, allegedly haunted by entities such as the Lady in Blue and an old prospector known for taking sips from unsuspecting patrons, the club's eerie past sets the stage for ghostly phenomena. Upon entering, the YouTube team unearthing the supernatural is greeted by the sounds of footsteps, prompting speculation about the origin of these ghostly echoes. Please come here and light that up. 
I want to make sure that we have an audience. Ask a few questions. Employing a spirit box, they capture a nearby whistle and experience a sudden pounding noise in the ensuing silence. Connect to it and speak to us. Who whistled? I heard, I heard that too. Good. Hello. The old Washall Club pulsates with spectral activity, suggesting the lively presence of spirits who, in my opinion, seem to be enjoying their ethereal existence. Nature Springfield is a compact city nestled between Dayton and Columbus, Ohio, positioned along the Bad River, home to the remnants of a 90-year-old abandoned power plant. Erected in October 1927, the Mad River power plant faced a demolition in 2010. The deconstruction progressed smoothly until November, when a pivotal challenge arose. The task at hand was the removal of a towering 275-foot smokestack, employing explosives and making a incision on one side. The intention was for the tower to fall eastward into an open area. However, the structure had other plans. Defying expectations, the tower veered southeast, crashing through a building housing backup generators and toppling to 12,000 volt power lines, heightening the peril of the situation. Advanced Explosives Demolition, Incorporated, an Idaho-based company, managed the operation. They asserted that the explosives functioned as intended, but an unnoticed crack in the south side led the tower astray. Approximately 4,000 residents in the Springfield vicinity experienced a power outage, but thankfully, no injuries were reported. The aftermath, however, brought a fresh set of challenges. First Energy, the power line owner, claimed $19 million in losses due to the flawed demolition. Legal action ensued, but a settlement was reached before the case went to trial. In Nairobi, Kenya, halfway around the world, authorities recently identified a teenage girl accused of brutally stabbing a hospital director 25 times on September 15th. The alleged perpetrator, identified as Anne Adihambo, age 15 to 16, is currently evading police. CCTV footage captured Adihambo attempting to scale a wall topped with razor wire as she tries to flee the victim's property. At one juncture, another woman confronts her, drawing the attention of several unlucky neighbors, but Adihambo eventually manages to surmount the razor wire. Police had initially hoped that her distinctive clothing would aid in her identification, but these garments were later discovered abandoned in a wooden shack in the nearby Babalu village. At present, Adihambo remains at large, and authorities are actively pursuing her in connection with the heinous crime. A gigantic bison bull captures the attention of onlookers as it asserts his presence on the roadside, becoming an awe-inspiring spectacle. Naturally, the creature's size obstructs the road, prompting a daring individual to exit his car and display his bravery. The inevitable unfolds as the bison charges at the man, who surprisingly holds his ground and emits a few grunts in an attempt to intimidate the creature. Astonishingly, the tactic proves effective. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh god. Despite the apparent success in this instance, I strongly advise against attempting such acts of bravery as they pose significant risks. The video kicks off with a gathering of friends recording a clown they spotted in a park, remarking on the peculiar nature of someone engaging in such behavior. That is so creepy. This is gross. Wait, what the fuck is that? The clown becomes aware of the group and initiates a pursuit, honking a bulb horn. Despite there being a considerable distance between the group and the clown, they successfully evade the pursuer. Additionally, it appears that the clown's mask may have slipped off during the chase. Oh god. Oh my 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 god. Like many modes of mass transportation today, bomb threats stand out as a primary concern. 
This became evident when, in 2014, a 25-year-old man allegedly issued a bomb threat on his Sun Wing flight travel from Toronto to Panama. The incident was treated with the utmost seriousness, leading to a dramatic footage captured by another passenger as heavily armed police stormed the flight. However, the suspect's father contended that his son was not responsible and was grappling with severe mental health issues, including anorexia, bulimia, and depression. He asserted that his son had not received adequate support for these challenges. The alleged bomb threat occurred when the suspect, Ali, received a headset from a flight attendant. Expressing hatred for Canada due to the high cost of cigarettes, Ali reportedly declared his intent to bomb not just the plane, but the entire country. The pilot promptly turned the plane around 45 minutes into the flight, with Sunwing Flight 772 escorted back to Toronto Pearson International Airport by two U.S. fighter jets as a precautionary measure. On the ground, police surrounded the airliner and officers boarded, instructing passengers to lower their heads and raise their hands. One passenger, Lorena Karim, described the intense moment of the SWAT team storming the plane, recounting being struck in the washroom as the SWAT team shut the door, creating a harrowing experience surrounded by guns. Some passengers criticized the police response as excessively aggressive, labeling it extremely frightening. Ali Shahi faced multiple charges, including uttering threats, endangering aircraft safety, mischief, interfering with the lawful enjoyment of property, and mischief to property. Unfortunately, the misfortune continued for those aboard Sunwing Flight 772, as their subsequent flight was diverted once again, this time to Montego Bay, Jamaica, due to a medical emergency on board. It proved to be an extraordinarily challenging journey for these passengers. In the Chinese Ninja Territory, a truck hauls at a gas station for refueling. As the driver ignites the engine to depart, a sudden inferno gulfs the surroundings seemingly out of nowhere. The rapid onset, devoid of an apparent cause, is unsettling. However, upon closer examination a few seconds into the video, a peculiar liquid on the ground becomes noticeable leading to a speculation about its highly flammable nature. The driver hastily exits the truck in search of safety as the flames intensify. Yet, the prompt actions of the gas station attendant prove crucial in containing the fire within a mere three minutes. Their swift response with the fire extinguishers is evident, with the flames persistently threatening to flare up despite the onslaught. In a subsequent statement, one of the attendants reflects on the instinctive nature of their actions emphasizing that personal safety was momentarily set aside for the urgent task of extinguishing the fire. The attendant wasn't contemplating personal well-being, but was driven by the immediate need to quell the flames, recognizing the potential for more perilous consequences following the outbreak. Consider what you would do in that split second if placed in a similar position. Paranoid Normal, an Instagram user, recently shared a video that has left viewers astonished. The footage commences with a homeowner engrossed in a video game, but the focus swiftly shifts as the homeowner, who has long harbored suspicions about his residence being haunted, poses a question. Why do you keep turning off the TV? Why do you keep turning off the TV? Ooh. Before viewers can contemplate the query, a rocking chair in the room eerily begins to move autonomously. The visibly shaken homeowner then calls out to his wife, seeking validation for the bizarre event, only to receive an exhausted dismissal from upstairs. Hey, hon. Come here. Look. <laughs> I don't think it's just down here. It becomes apparent that this isn't the first peculiar experience in the household, as if the situation wasn't disconcerting enough. A closer look at the reflection in the TV reveals a shadowy figure rising from the rocking chair. Oh wow, wait. I swear I can see. Ooh, stop it. I'm not liking that. The camera pans swiftly to capture the figure, yet upon investigation, the room is found empty with no trace of a shadowy figure.
This unsettling footage, coupled with the wife's wearied reaction, paints a picture of a household accustomed to unexplained events. Comments on the post vary from expressions of sympathy and concern to skeptics proposing logical explanations such as a trick of the light. Nevertheless, the consensus is clear. Something out of the ordinary was captured. The haunting video raises more questions than answers, leaving the internet abuzz with theories, whether one is a believer in the supernatural or a staunch skeptic. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm not liking this. Oh, wow. Wait. I swear I can see. Ooh, stop it. There's this intriguing video circulating on Instagram that has everyone scratching their heads. It depicts an elderly man walking alone, carrying what appears to be a bucket or pail. Suddenly, a dog materializes right behind him. The curious part is that the dog didn't sprint from across the street, and it wasn't walking alongside the man from the beginning. The man briefly acknowledges the dog's presence but continues walking, seemingly unfazed by the oddity of a dog appearing out of nowhere. Various theories emerged among those who've watched the video. Some entertain the notion that it might be a dog that time-traveled, while others consider it a glitch in reality, akin to a blip in the Matrix. There's speculation that something might have deviated from the usual order of things. So here's the pivotal question. Which theory do you find more plausible regarding this peculiar occurrence? Or is there a simpler explanation that eludes our perception? Observing this video without commentary, the scene appears ordinary. A man in an extended black coat leaning over a counter. However, keen eyes will discern his hand concealed beneath the counter, on the opposing side. The thief's hand is visible inside the counter, brandishing a gun aimed directly at the cashier, who undoubtedly appears terrified. The entire incident was captured by the gas station surveillance camera. This occurrence unfolded post-midnight at a gas station in Canarsie, Brooklyn. The store attendant fell victim to a robbery, losing both his mobile phone and approximately $500 from the cash register. While the footage portrays a solitary robber welding the gun, police recognize that the individual in the black coat had an accomplice. This video purportedly originates from a flight over Zambia. A passenger casually captures the scenery outside of their window, and to their surprise, a colossal humanoid figure begins to materialize in the distance. The creature appears to effortlessly match the aircraft's speed, accompanying it briefly before veering off and disappearing. While the logical explanation points to CGI, in the event that it isn't computer generated, the true identity of this enigmatic creature remains open to speculation. In the following footage, two individuals are diving off the coast of Papua New Guinea. The man seen vigorously rubbing a plastic bottle between his hands is attempting a perilous feat, enticing sharks. Despite the risk, he ventures away from his companion into the open water to attract a shark, unaware that his daredevil act is about to be fulfilled. Suddenly, and seemingly out of nowhere, a shark advances directly towards the man. Neither of the two divers anticipates the impending danger. Let me slow down the sequence for you. Surprisingly, the man emerges from the encounter unscathed, aside from a severe headache caused by the shark colliding with him upon realizing he was not prey. The disconcerting aspect of this video lies in the nonchalant demeanor of the armed robber as he casually brandishes his gun and recklessly loads it inside a convenience store. This incident occurred at a gas station in the Bronx, not during the night, but in broad daylight. The morning setting did not deter the robber and his accomplice, who entered the store with an audacity that suggested pulling out a gun in the middle of the day was an ordinary occurrence. The gas station surveillance camera captured the entire event, revealing the criminals donned in dark clothing and nose masks, purposefully concealing their identities as they executed their dangerous action. Situated in Los Angeles, 
The Biltmore Hotel consults numerous enigmas and YouTuber hype Mike, along with his team, is on a mission to uncover them. While Mike narrates an occurrence to his audience, an inexplicable noise captures his attention. The group delves into the hotel, encountering unexplained sounds. The baby? What? Yo, chill, chill. I just saw something. What? Like a sh what? Like, something like a person? Walked across it, a whole shadow. Like a whole lot of shadow just walked across. You didn't see that? No, I didn't. I was looking at you. Though I may not have witnessed the shadow that Mike saw, I distinctly hear a mysterious cry. Subsequently, using their K2 meter, they register a reading from the ball. Yo. Oh my Okay, Shire, come this way, come this way. As they proceed, another unsettling sound prompts them to pause, a definite presence of footsteps. footsteps in there. It's evident that someone or something lurks within. If I were to venture a guess, I'd wager it on being more likely a supernatural entity, perhaps a ghost or some other paranormal phenomenon. Animals are generally resilient and capable, yet there are instances when they find themselves in a challenging predicament beyond their ability to navigate independently. In a 2019 video from Michigan, a nature enthusiast named Mark Johnson, while on a hunting excursion with his dog, encountered a pair of bucks entangled in a precarious situation. Initially dismissing it as a typical display of animal combat, Mark soon realizes the severity of the situation as the bucks were genuinely stuck. Recognizing the potential threats of exhaustion, hunger, or attacks by coyotes, Mark decided to enlist the assistance of his friends. Together, they formulated a plan and gathered the essential tools such as a rope and a chainsaw designed for cutting branches. Locating the tangled bucks near trees, they attempted to liberate them, but the frightened deer retreated deeper into the woods. The situation escalated when the bucks slipped into a stream, heightening the risk of drowning. Despite the worsening circumstances, Mark exhibited quick thinking and skillfully cut one of the antlers, freeing the distressed animals with surgical precision. Following their release, the grateful deer promptly rose to their feet and hastened away. Undoubtedly, they must have felt immense gratitude for the timely intervention and assistance they received. In the path ahead lies an ominous fork, raising questions about its origin. Perhaps it belongs to the devil. The spine-chilling video, initially shared by SK Haunted Vlogs and later featured on the YouTube channel Chez the Zombie, gained popularity within the Hindi-speaking YouTube community. The SK Haunted team, while traversing the dimly lit side of a road at night, encounters a mysterious creature. <laughs> the creature, distinguishable by its eyes emitting an otherworldly gleam, prompts them to venture further down the road. However, their journey takes an unsettling turn as they come across another peculiar sight. A humanoid figure on all fours. To the observer, the creature appears to possess a substantial beard and once again, its eyes radiate an eerie light. Attempting to escape, the team faces an unexpected development. Okay, 
Now stranded on a desolate road enveloped in darkness, they find themselves in the company of a demonic being and a malfunctioning bike. The inevitable conclusion seems far away from a fairy tale ending. One can only hope that this isn't a piece of found footage and that the individuals involved escape this ominous encounter unscathed. Envy can lead to numerous complications, impacting not only personal relationships but also involving police. Such a scenario unfolded when the Los Angeles police responded to a domestic disturbance involving 42-year-old Jose Cayar, who was wielding a knife to vandalize this shared bed with his girlfriend. I don't know, I think my boyfriend's having like a mental breakdown and he has a, he does have a knife. Cayar informed the police that his actions were driven by jealousy, triggered by another man repeatedly calling his girlfriend. Although the young woman had not been physically harmed, the caller had issued threats of violence in connection with the situation. Fortunately, the woman averted potential harm by seeking refuge in a closet and promptly calling 911. No, no, I, I was sleeping. We had some. I'm you know, I was making food. Woke up, made some margaritas. We were just drinking, chilling, and then I don't know he just started exploding. Okay. And you're hiding in the closet? Yeah, he was in the closet. Cause he threw like he threw beers, he threw everything on the floor, and then he had a, a knife, and then he cut the bed. Okay. You never see this, right? Never, never. Okay. Okay, go hang up. Upon arriving at the scene, the police entered the apartment with drawn weapons, encountering resistance from Kayar. However, their intervention was further facilitated by the inclusion of a Spanish speaking police officer aimed at de escalating the situation. Ultimately, it was determined that Kyar was undergoing a mental health crisis and he was apprehended without further complications. The essence of the specter needs to hit the gym. Shared by Redditor Rusty Walker 6705, the accompanying caption humorously suggests ghosts can work out too. This video captures the ghost diligently toning its glutes even in the afterlife, providing some amusement for certain editors. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, doce, doce. While psychists might offer an explanation for this phenomenon, encountering such a spirited workout partner might not be on everyone's wish list. Here's to hoping that this particular ghost prefers a solo exercise routine. Michael Witter, a TikTok influencer, embarked on a visit to Barnes & Noble bookstore in Burbank as part of her commitment to her TikTok show, Solo Dates, where she endeavors to suggest solo activities to her followers during times of loneliness. However, the outing took an unexpected turn, becoming unsettling and invasive. Almost immediately upon her arrival, a man began shadowing her every move, creating an uncomfortable atmosphere. The situation escalated when the man crouched down and positioned himself uncomfortably close to Michelle, exhibiting behaviors that bordered on invasive, resembling sniffing. The stalker's peculiar actions extended beyond Michelle as he engaged in a similarly strange dance with another customer in the bookstore. When Michelle confronted the individual who was still crouched and asked, what are you doing? His response was a dismissive claim that he was tying his shoes. He said, what are you doing? Yeah. And his reaction was? He said, tying my shoe, what are you doing? Which he wasn't. I mean, he was pretending to. His shoes were tied. This marred what was intended to be a solo date, leaving Michelle feeling violated and raising concerns about personal safety during her outing. In the following footage, a shark makes a grand entrance reminiscent of a Disney supervillain. However, unlike the more laid-back sharks we've previously showcased, this one displays a more aggressive demeanor, attempting to directly approach the diver inside of the cage.
After a few unsuccessful attempts, it becomes evident that the shark cannot penetrate the cage and subsequently swims away. The divers inside the cage exhale a collective sigh of relief, grateful that the shark's apparent hunger or aggression did not escalate further. Just another day at the office for these divers, it seems. Surveying the aftermath prompts the immediate question, what transpired here? While some answers have surfaced, they only lead to more inquiries. The disconcerting audio captures the resonance of a fire ascending into the atmosphere. Accompanied by the impactful explosion wreaking havoc on nearby houses, debris is propelled through the air and doors are rattled on their hinges. The resounding blast reverberated throughout Plum, Pennsylvania, leaving residents puzzled about the cause. The residence where the explosion originated wasn't the sole casualty. Three houses down the street were reduced to rubble, and several others faced destruction due to structural damage incurred in the blast. Tragically, a father and son lost their lives in a home across the street, forever silencing the smiles fondly recalled by neighbors and relatives. The current death toll stands at five individuals, encompassing the father and son. Amidst the wreckage, firefighters detected the unsettling sound of bullets exploding, although it was unrelated to the explosion's cause. Compounding the complexity, many homes in the affected streets were situated above an abandoned mine, with an active gas well not too far away. This prompts the pressing question, why was such a perilous situation allowed to unfold? Concerns echo among residents in the neighborhood, raising apprehensions about the safety of other houses in the vicinity and whether they too are at risk of a similar fate. Mexico, renowned for its rich history and vibrant culture, is a home to deep-rooted mysteries that have both fascinated and perplexed many. A recent revelation by a popular podcast, Paranormal Podcast, further adds intrigue to the nation's collection of unexplained events. The podcast delves into a peculiar incident captured on surveillance cameras, the evidence of which caused a stir in both the paranormal and police communities. The officers who recorded the incident, brave as they are, find the footage not just unusual but deeply unsettling, prompting them to request anonymity. This eerie occurrence isn't a one-time event. Rather, it mysteriously appears to repeat every decade. The cylindrical pattern led the paranormal podcast team on an exhaustive search across Mexico, ultimately leading to the discovery of a specific house. Interviews with security personnel, some of whom have worked in the vicinity for over a decade, corroborated the reoccurring nature of this strange event. Despite reports that the house never housed children, a resident shares an unsettling account of hearing noises from the upper floor, mirroring a report made by her late husband a decade prior. The homeowner, fearing intruders, called the police, who, upon investigation, found no sign of anyone. However, it's the surveillance footage that sends shivers down one's spine. A CCTV camera across the street has a clear view of the lady's house, capturing the police officers leaving her after the investigation. Moments later, the camera reveals movement in the upper floor window. An apparition resembling three children, with one clutching a doll or possibly a baby. Strangely, their attire doesn't align with contemporary fashion, but rather resembles English children from the 1900s. And even when slowed down, one child appears to twirl into view while another slowly dissipates. Adjacent to a school, one might be tempted to link the apparitions with the establishment. However, records reveal no related tragedies or significant events that might contribute to such a haunting. Given the police testimony, CCTV footage, and the homeowner's account of strange noises, one is left to truly ponder what was captured on camera in this perplexing scenario. Police are seeking your assistance in identifying individuals responsible for robbing and instilling fear in Walmart customers, specifically targeting shoppers in the store's parking lots. We 
have really good footage of them, so we know that someone out there knows them. Authorities are actively searching for two men involved in an armed robbery and attempted robbery of customers within the Walmart parking lot on separate occasions last week. The incidents occurred on different days and involved two distinct vehicles, with one of them already recovered. Inside the retrieved vehicle, police discovered a message left by the perpetrators addressed to them. This vehicle was initially used in the first robbery before being abandoned. The Rowlett police now suspect a connection between Rowlett and DeSoto, suggesting that the individuals responsible might be from the latter. Surveillance footage is available, showing the robbery in the parking lot, as well as the two men and a woman inside Walmart before the gunpoint robbery occurred at the back of a pickup truck in the parking lot. In the first incident on November 7th at 8.54 p.m., the initial victim who was loading groceries was confronted by a suspect pointing a gun, demanding his wallet. The victim's dash camera recorded the incident, and within eight minutes, the stolen credit cards were used in Rowlett and Garland. The suspects left Rowlett in a stolen black Hyundai Elantra, later recovered in Oak Cliff. The second incident took place two days later on November 9th at 10 a.m. This time, the suspects used a stolen red Hyundai Sonata, also taken from DeSoto. Inside of Walmart, doing some shopping, three individuals are seen, two males, one female, and then uh, an hour later, about an hour later, they come out and they approach our first victim. A pattern has emerged, indicating a preference for Hyundai vehicles. The modus operandi seems to involve smashing the back right rear window to gain access to the vehicles. The stolen red Hyundai Sonata has license plate SWH0384 and police are still searching for it. The recovered vehicle from the first robbery had a mocking message scrawled inside stating, we had fun on the dashboard screen and three police chase on the car ceiling. Authorities are particularly urging the public to focus on the video footage of the suspects inside Walmart before the robbery. If you recognize these individuals, you are encouraged to contact Detective Freeman in Rowlett, who is leading the investigation. Concerns have been raised in surrounding communities such as Garland, Mesquite, and Dallas, and the police are eager to hear from anyone with information related to similar cases. The potential danger of armed confrontations during routine activities, such as loading groceries into vehicles, underscores the urgency for public cooperation in identifying the suspects. In July, as a bustling Victorian line service departed from a Brixton station, a perilous knife altercation unfolded involving two teenagers. Focus on the individual depicted on the screen. He wields a menacing hunting knife, deploying it to stab a 16-year-old boy. Witness the alarming footage as he hastily flees the crime scene. The figure captured brandishing the menacing knife is 19-year-old Amir J. Nikimi Young, who had just moments earlier stabbed a young man in the side. As Amir J. makes his escape, frightened passengers scramble for safety, ensuring they steer clear of him and his companions as they navigate through the train coaches. Subsequently, Amir J. was apprehended at a Stockwell station and has since been sentenced to a prison term exceeding six years for his actions. Acts of homophobia have become increasingly prevalent in contemporary society. However, the shock experienced when witnessing such events reaffirms the unsettling transformation it induces in otherwise rational individuals. An incident at a laundromat serves as a stark example. A seemingly pleasant family, appearing entirely ordinary as they entered with their children, concealed a reservoir of hatred within. The unexpected turn of events unfolded when the woman in the family assumed a confrontational stance discarding her slippers and adopting a fighting posture. To everyone's surprise, it was the husband who initiated the aggression, delivering a direct punch. The wife and others swiftly joined in, enthusiastically participating in a barrage of punches and kicks directed at a now defenseless trans woman. Tragically, the situation escalated to the point where the trans woman was reportedly stabbed amidst the chaos. The assailant subjected the trans woman to a barrage of anti-LGBT slurs, prompting law enforcement to contemplate charging them with a hate crime. Following the altercation, they hastily departed the laundromat, leaving behind a scene of turmoil. However, the subsequent day, police apprehended them, ensuring accountability for their actions. On July 25th, Patrol Officer Nick Adams initiates what was expected to be a routine traffic stop, but the events that transpired deviate significantly from his anticipations. Observing an SUV parked along the road facing the wrong direction, Officer Adams approaches to address the situation. However, his attempts to engage the driver, Alicia Durant, are met with resistance as she refuses to roll down her window or respond to his inquiries. You're in the wrong lane. Are you okay? Are you okay, man? 
What's going on? Tell me what's going on. Are you okay? Despite several attempts to discern the issue, Durant remains silent, prompting Officer Adams to radio his superior and explain the peculiar circumstances. Can you tell me what's going on? Why are you in the wrong lane? Can you tell me why you're in the wrong lane? Female that won't answer any questions. I think I'm in our vet. I'm in our turn lane to go into the shops if you want to start one. The standoff persists with Officer Adams expressing concern for Durant's well-being and inquiring about potential alcohol consumption. Have you, yet, have you been drinking or anything? It doesn't look like you've been drinking. The situation takes a drastic turn when Durant reaches for something in her middle console. Officer Adams, noticing this, questions her and his tone becomes agitated upon discovering a firearm in the car. Swiftly, he seizes Durant's hand and moves to the rear of the vehicle, drawing his own weapon and discharging a shot in response to the perceived threat. What do you got in there? What do you got in there, man? What do you got in there? What do you got in there? Oh! Immediately, Officer Adams broadcasts a shots fired call on the radio and requests backup. Upon the arrival of backup, it becomes apparent that Durant is no longer breathing. Additionally, a nearby Jeep bears the impact of one of the bullets from Officer Adams' firearm. Miraculously, the occupants of the Jeep remain unharmed as the bullet only strikes the windshield. Officer Adams, visibly shaken by the unfolding events, approaches the Jeep to ensure the well-being of his occupants. Audibly distraught, he can be heard crying and extending apologies in the aftermath of this tragic incident. In a profoundly disconcerting episode that transpired around midnight, two individuals covertly gain access to an apartment building. They ring the doorbell, catching the homeowner's child off guard who was unaware of the potential danger. Regrettably, inadvertently open the door, unwittingly exposing their home to a threat. Understandably, the homeowner is deeply shaken and distressed in the aftermath of this alarming incident. A long-standing community bar in Wyoming County was consumed by an immense fire. Factoryville Fire Chief Gal reported that the alarm was raised shortly after 2 p.m., prompting emergency teams from both Wyoming and Lackawanna counties to spring into action. Gal mentioned that the fire rapidly escalated, fueled by strong winds, and at one juncture, the blaze was so massive that it was visible over a considerable distance. For generations, Jen's Tavern had served as a well-known gathering place in the region, having opened its doors in 1955. The charity boxes typically secured at McDonald's are usually anchored, indicating that there must have been previous incidents necessitating such precautions. This man, displaying a blatant disregard for consequences, approaches the collection box for the poppy charity, casually unfastens it, discreetly slips it under his coat to conceal it, and then departs the restaurant. The exact sum of money that man managed to collect through donations remains uncertain, but these boxes are seldom tallied. While it might not have been a substantial amount, the swiftness and self-assuredness of his actions suggest that this was not his first experience with such activities. The Conjuring House, owing to its eerie and spine-chilling reputation, continues to be the ultimate destination for numerous paranormal themes. For YouTuber Jake the Viking and his team, this location truly lives up to its ominous name. While in the library, the crew hears what resembles a woman's voice. We're looking over there. Like a door. Still shut. Like... There what the f was that? What? Did you hear that? What was that? Did you hear that? Well, yeah. That came from over here. You is, heard is it? Is Jennifer out there? And shortly after, the door swings open. 
The heat thing? Yeah. Is that you still? Okay. Yeah, I'm shutting the door. Oh, the door's opening! Bro, oh, I just shut this one. Okay. Yeah. Yo. That thing is moving. Their initial assumption is that it might have been related to changes in air pressure. However, they proceed to capture a mysterious figure on their connected device. Okay, not to alarm you. No. For, for a split second, I had a body on this camera. Remember when it was picking up? They attempt to communicate with it, but it remains unresponsive. Around on the chair. After a second attempt, the figure draws nearer. There's somebody on that chair in front of us. It wasn't doing that earlier. Bro. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! F me! Appearing as if it's slowly crawling towards them. Later on, a collective experience leaves them all hearing an unexplained sound simultaneously. What the f was that? How did you hear? Because you got good headphones on. It came through the headphones. It came through the headphones. I'm getting, I'm getting audio from you. I'm got, I've, I've got super chills right now. What the f was that? Furthermore, in another room, a steady cam records an enigmatic noise. The plethora of unexplained occurrences at the Conjuring House leads way to the local legends surrounding the place. In my personal perspective, these stories seem undeniably real. A large assembly of individuals can pose a significant threat, particularly when they are collectively excited and encouraged by the peers. This particular McDonald's in Nottingham found itself in a situation where such a crowd was causing chaos as people climbed onto the counters and jostled one another. The employees in the background appeared uncertain about how to react, some watching with what appeared to be sheer horror, while others seemed to display a complete lack of concern for the unfolding events. Following this incident, the police utilized the video footage to analyze the actions of the mob, who had also been engaged in looting and theft at the McDonald's. Personally, regardless of how hungry I may be, witnessing such a scene would undoubtedly prompt me to turn around and exit the establishment. This is the Bataclan Theater, and in the video, the Eagles of Death Metal Band is performing heavy metal music for their audience of 1,500 fans. It was Friday, November 13th, 2015, and people were going about their daily routines, unaware of the imminent danger lurking in the shadows. As the band continued to play, three individuals entered the theater and began shooting at the crowd. The Eagles of Death Metal Band was still performing when the chaos erupted. You can distinctly hear the moment when the band's music abruptly ceases, replaced by the terrifying sound of gunshots tearing through the night. Observing the guitarist as he quickly takes cover and starts to run, the drummer hunkering down beneath his drum set, and the lead guitarist hesitating, taking a step back, uncertain of where to go, evokes a heart-stopping sensation as they react to the imminent peril, along with their devoted fans. In the subsequent clip, survivors are seen leaving the theater after the police neutralized the attackers and rescued the hostages they had taken. This surreal event was part of a coordinated three-pronged attack that included bomb explosions at various locations in Paris on the same fateful day. Witnessing that group of scholars face a sudden life-threatening situation as their plane stalled in midair was incredibly harrowing. The moment when the aircraft started to flip, endangering the skydivers, was truly unimaginable. It's almost inconceivable that the circumstances deteriorated to the point where even the pilot had to eject from the aircraft. Thankfully, everyone, including Scott and the pilot, managed to survive the ordeal, just contemplating how much more catastrophic it could have been sends a chilling sensation down my spine. Google Maps often reveals perplexing phenomena, and IKEA Power has stumbled upon something rather unsettling in what appears to be the heart of the desert. These colossal indentions in the sand, one of which seems to contain water, appear far from natural. 
situated within a high security military base. Some other commentators contend that the entire city of Ridgecrest, California is riddled with enigmatic and dubious sights. These formations bear a striking resemblance to spacecraft or highly classified objects that one would assume should remain hidden from satellite surveillance. What do you believe we are observing in this instance? The news of that terrifying event in which the hippo unexpectedly charged at the zookeeper was undeniably anxiety inducing. It's astonishing to think that the zookeeper attempted to intervene in a clash between two territorial male hippos. The immense power of the hippo's bite is truly horrifying. It's truly miraculous that the zookeeper emerged from the incident without injury, as a single bite could have had disastrous consequences. Have you ever encountered such a hair-raising confrontation with animals in the past? Just contemplating it sends shivers down my spine. Consider this sinkhole in Bangladesh, for instance. On November 19th, 2015, a sinkhole materialized beneath a beach house in close proximity to the capital of Dhaka. Fortunately, authorities detected the warning signs and evacuated the residence before it collapsed. The truly alarming aspect is how rapidly the house vanished as the ground swallowed it entirely, leaving no trace of its prior existence. Sinkholes like this can be classified into two categories, natural and man-made. Natural sinkholes arise due to geological and topographical factors, while man-made sinkholes occur as a result of extensive underground excavations causing stress on the foundation. Additionally, heavy rainfall plays a pivotal role by weakening the soil and triggering subsidence. In July of 2007, WJLA, a TV station in Washington, D.C., was abruptly interrupted from its regular programming. Everything was going as usual when all of a sudden the screen went black, and without warning, this image appeared on viewers' TVs. A close-up, grainy black-and-white photo of two human heads, one smiling and one nod. Viewers watching live were confused and honestly creeped out. The image was unsettling to say the least. It stayed on screen for several seconds with no movement or sound, just the image, before abruptly disappearing and returning to the station's regular programming. Many viewers called the station and made posts online trying to get answers. In response, the cable company ended up releasing an official statement on the incident. They claimed the image was a still frame from an advertisement for the Oprah Winfrey show that was scheduled to play later on. Basically, they reasoned that their system somehow glitched in showing the still frame. The explanation left people skeptical. Many searched but found no Oprah Winfrey advertisement showing anything resembling the still frame. It's widely believed the explanation was a cover-up for a successful hijacking of the station, although if this is the case, whoever's responsible for it is not identified. Viewers that had footage of the incident found that after posting them online, they were mysteriously getting taken down. There are no surviving videos left on the internet today, and so footage of the incident is now being treated as lost media. The only remaining evidence is the picture of the still frame that was shown. In the Shapan province of northern Thailand, people were going about their regular laundry routine when an unusual incident occurred. The clothes inside the tumble dryer became overheated, leading to the dryer catching fire. Two women and a child were seated directly in front of the dryer when the flames erupted, as the fire quickly intensified. One of the women stood up and took a step away, while the mother swiftly moved the child to a safer distance. Meanwhile, onlookers attempted to create more space between themselves and the fire. The employees on site had a fire extinguisher at the ready, but they appeared somewhat uncertain about the best approach to combat the flames. Their caution was well-founded, as opening the dryer doors would have provided additional oxygen to the fire, causing it to flare up. Despite initial challenges, they ultimately managed to bring the fire under control without causing damage to any other part of the laundromat. The footage from 2018 in which two unaware children were swimming in the ocean brought them astonishingly close to two killer wells it is undeniably distressing to contemplate. Watching this incident unfold is sure to trigger a surge of anxiety. Oh 
Thankfully, those magnificent creatures opted to proceed on their way without causing any harm. Nevertheless, the mere notion of what might have unfolded is haunting. Can you envision yourself in such a situation? What do you think your instincts would have directed you to do? At times, chaos originates from within, as is evident in the subway incident where an employee appears to be on the brink, engaged in a heated argument with a co-worker. The situation escalates as threats are exchanged, with the subway employee threatening to damage the co-worker's phone, and in response, she threatens to pay for the phone's repair. Ultimately, she decides to leave, and he instructs her to clock out, indicating that he likely holds a position of authority, making the situation more disconcerting. If you mess up my phone, I'm not going to mess up your phone. You can stop recording me because you do not have my permission to record me, and I will sue you for it. The subway employee berates the co-worker for recording the interaction, though she is doing so to protect herself. It becomes apparent that his anger stems from her spending extended periods in the bathroom due to pregnancy-related complications. That's because I'm, I'm pregnant, mister. A pregnancy is not an excuse. He contends that she shouldn't continue working if her condition is that severe. Even after she checks out, he persists in shouting at her. She contacts the manager to explain the situation and, despite having clocked out, she continues to confront him. I'm about to put all this, all this time well, on put Facebook. Put it on Facebook and I swear to God, I'm about I to will put it have grass in jail. Meanwhile, he returns to his duties assisting customers as she roams around, continuing the argument. Both parties bear some responsibility for the dispute. The employee was unquestionably wrong for yelling at his coworker, but she also inadvertently escalated the situation by persisting in her confrontation. Therefore, it's reasonable to conclude that they both share blame for the escalating conflict. In the following video clip, a bear initially engages in typical bear behavior by foraging through trash in search of food. However, it appears dissatisfied with the contents of the trash can and instead strolls over to the parked cars and approaches a nearby man. Understandably sensing the potential danger, the man retreats and seeks refuge by locking himself inside the house. Nevertheless, the bear persistently advances, coming uncomfortably close. Uh, five feet. Little bastard don't come to the window. This bear displays a persistent interest in what might be a human meal, prompting the cameraman to resort to his most powerful tool for defense. Bear spray. As expected, the spray proves effective, causing the bear to swiftly retreat and run away. The video commences with two individuals explaining that they decided to drive to a cornfield in response to rumors of a clown's presence in the area. They proceed down the road at a cautious pace their attention fixed on the cornfield, hoping to catch a glimpse of something unusual. Eventually, the passenger requests the driver to stop because he believes he spotted something. Stop, 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 stop. What? I think I see something. What's up? No way. What did you see? Did you see a clown? Yeah. No fucking way. While the passenger begins to venture into the cornfield, the driver catches sight of a clown in a side mirror. He hastily urges his friend to return to the vehicle as the clown pursues them, chasing after the car. Driver! Oh my god! Get the get in here! Uh, fortunately, the two men manage to escape quickly enough. Oh, oh my oh god! god. Go, go, fuck! Holy fuck. fuck! Oh my god! Oh my god! god. What? Oh shit! He just went this video is captured in a cave located in southern Germany and it is certainly not intended for individuals prone to claustrophobia. The footage showcases people navigating their way through incredibly narrow passages. If you've persevered this far into the video, it's safe to assume you either don't suffer from claustrophobia or possess a strong sense of adventure. In some sections, the rock formations are so constricting that it's impossible to turn your head or even take a full breath to pass through them. Moreover, since there's water at the entrance, not wearing an appropriate wetsuit can lead to a dangerous situation. 
becoming cold and wet deep within the cave system could potentially result in a life-threatening scenario as any rescue mission might prove to be unsuccessful if one were to become trapped. Therefore, it's advisable to be well prepared and proceed with caution as you explore this captivating video. From time to time, passengers may anticipate a less than ideal experience, such as turbulence when flying. However, the last thing anyone expects is for the body of the aircraft to develop cracks during the flight. This exact scenario occurred on American Airlines flight en route from San Francisco to Dallas in 2014. As the plane's fuselage began to exhibit visible cracks, passengers on board were thrown into a state of panic, urgently calling for flight attendants. They alerted the cabin crew to the fact that the interior panel of the cabin on both sides had started to separate from the walls, creating a noticeable gap. Initially, the captain contemplated pressing on with the flight to Dallas as the cabin pressure remained stable. However, the situation took a terrifying turn when the aircraft began to shake violently. After a thorough inspection, the captain communicated with air traffic control, declaring an emergency and requesting an immediate landing. Horrified passengers documented the event by capturing videos, some of which were uploaded to YouTube and shared with local news outlets. One of the passengers, James Wilson, reported that popping noises were audible outside the cabin shortly after takeoff, and the fuselage began to tremble. The insulation became exposed as the interior panels detached from the walls, resulting in a drop of cabin pressure. An American Airlines spokesperson later cited a blown air duct as the cause of the incident. With further investigation planned, Passenger James Wilson described the issue as affecting the entire row 14, on all sides, from the floor to the ceiling. Suddenly, there was a series of loud popping sounds and a tearing noise, reminiscent of heavy objects falling from the overhead bins. In this video, we observe an inquisitive bear meandering through the urban neighborhoods of Canada. The local residents, however, are completely unaware of their proximity to the bear. The bear continues its exploration, following its typical behavior in such situations, regrettably for three young girls. They unexpectedly encounter the hungry bear, and what unfolds next is truly astonishing. Can it be true that they actually pulled out their smartphones to capture a photograph of the bear? Understandably, the bear appears perturbed by these peculiar humans' actions and swiftly retreats from the scene. Surprisingly, the bear re-emerges from its hiding place, much to the amazement of the individuals recording the encounter. It appears that the bear had a brief encounter with paparazzi and decided it wanted no part of the attention. In this case, it's difficult to fault the bear's reaction. When all else seems to falter, New Jersey consistently knows how to elevate the situation. On September 20th, Joshua Hargreaves took an alarming course of action by driving his gold Toyota SUV into a neighbor's garage in an apparent attempt to intimidate him. Five o'clock, I got a call saying what happened to the garage door, and I was like, what do you mean? It was there when I left. Following this, he proceeded to the nearest police station in Independence Township where he forcefully crashed through its wall, all the while celebrating and playing Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle, at full volume. Hargreaves exited his vehicle and began to revel in the wreckage he had caused. Astonishingly, he showed little reaction when he was promptly apprehended and charged with an act of terrorism, which carries the potential for a life sentence. Perhaps someone can consider sending him an iPod during his time in prison. This was intentional. Oh, absolutely, sure. You know, he admits it's intentional. He wanted to do it. Uh, his intent, he states that his intent was not to hurt anyone, uh, but he wanted to scare people. Surprisingly, it appears there's a rising trend of individuals sharing their eerie crawl spaces online. And this phenomenon is notably exemplified by TikTok user at J underscore baby. 
She revealed in her series of videos that her rental home featured several profoundly unsettling crawl spaces, which ignited fervent speculation among her viewers. Many users observed an unsettling message that read, I heart Colleen's body in one of the rooms, causing concern that it might be connected to a missing girl named Colleen. However, it is more likely the result of a child's creative scribbling from a previous owner. The peculiar crawl space in question was equipped with various fixtures, including a light switch, a light fixture, an outlet, exposed wires, and an exposed pipe, which were oddly concealed by a lampshade. The plaster transitioned into wood flooring as the tunnel opened up into a child's bedroom closet, adding to the eerie nature of the discovery. Given the context she presented in her initial video, where she has framed it as things in my rental house that just don't make sense, it's understandable that the users were left feeling uneasy by these revelations. The trend follows a pattern of people showcasing aspects of their homes, offices, or other spaces that are logical and make sense, creating a stark contrast to these enigmatic crawl spaces. Random things in my kitchen that just make sense. Furthermore, it's worth noting that her rental home harbored additional crawl spaces, making it clear that the unsettling discovery was not an isolated incident. A second crawl space was concealed behind a blacked out window filled with unpleasant items and dead leaves. Another crawl space, likely leading to the garage, was also present. And a fourth one near the ceiling unveiled an expired box of cheese nibs and a substantial spider web. While the user hasn't provided comprehensive elaboration or unearthed new information regarding these findings, she did confirm that the house was constructed in 1859. Encountering disruptive flight attendants or unruly passengers on your upcoming flight is something best avoided, as both situations can be equally distressing and unsettling within the confines of an aircraft, far above the ground and distant from immediate emergency assistance. On Delta Flight 2565, more than an hour after departing from Minneapolis, a distressing incident unfolded, captured on video by fellow passengers, and shared widely. The disturbance caused by two passengers was so severe that it compelled the flight to turn around and return to Minneapolis. The individuals at the center of the incident were a 35-year-old man named Blake and a 36-year-old woman named Anna. Anna attempted to use the restroom shortly after takeoff, a practice that is not permitted. The flight attendant instructed her to return to her seat, leading both passengers to react vehemently. As the confrontation escalated involving Blake, at least one other passenger came to the flight attendant's assistance. Upon landing back in Minneapolis, law enforcement was called to remove the disruptive couple, and this action was met with applause from their fellow passengers. Blake and Anna were subsequently charged with disorderly conduct. In response to the incident, Delta issued the following statement. The flight crew of Delta 2565 from Minneapolis, St. Paul to Los Angeles made the decision to return to Minneapolis shortly after takeoff. This was due to two passengers refusing to follow crew instructions, becoming aggressive and causing a disturbance in the cabin. On May 9th, 2017, a substantial crawler crane was positioned at the Arca State Stabio Railway Yard to lift a massive section of a new viaduct into place. However, the intended placement of the concrete bridge segment never occurred due to the crane toppling over, a dramatic incident that was captured in a video that went viral. Fortunately, no one sustained injuries when the crane came crashing down. In the video, you can see the crane operator making a narrow escape at the very last moment. He dropped more than 10 feet from the crane's cab and ran for his life just as the crane toppled over behind him. While the crash appeared loud on camera, the actual sound standing in close proximity to it would have been even more deafening. Subsequent investigation results revealed that the issue lay with the crane itself and not with the operator's actions. This was certainly a relief for the crane operator, who had narrowly escaped a life-threatening situation. However, he might have had concerns about his job security despite his survival. This particular clip has some unique aspects, primarily because the context in which it was presented is crucial. It emerged as part of the testimony during the Parkland shooting trials. 
and the footage depicts a man inside a booth at McDonald's. To an observer without the relevant context, this video may appear as nothing more than a young man engaged in a phone conversation. However, the chilling aspect of this clip becomes apparent when one understands the recent events that have unfolded. In reality, the person in the video is the shooter, who immediately after the Parkland shooting can be seen making a casual phone call to a friend asking for a ride home. The clip itself unfolds at a slow pace, with not much activity occurring. Nonetheless, the real terror lies in the fact that if encountered without any prior knowledge of the individual's identity, the video portrays him acting remarkably normal in the aftermath of such a traumatic event. In a video clip currently making the rounds on TikTok, shared by the account Tatakes.SobreNaturalist, a visitor captures the stunning sight of a cascading waterfall. However, as the camera pans, it captures an unexpected and somewhat eerie sight. Amidst the tumultuous water, a distinctive figure silhouette becomes visible. The tourist's astonishment is palpable, as they exclaim about the shadowy presence and urgently question their companion if they also witnessed it. While the video's origins remain enigmatic, its swift dissemination across various social media platforms underscores its eerie fascination. The footage has ignited curiosity and discussions, leaving viewers pondering whether the figure is a result of a trick of light, an optical illusion, or a genuinely unexplained phenomenon. As the debate persists, one thing remains clear. This waterfall in Rio Carlo has gained notoriety for more than just its natural beauty. The following video unfolds within the premises of the school hospital Universitario in Honduras. The legend surrounding this place tells of a doctor who tragically took his own life within the confines of this small teaching hospital many years ago. It is believed that his spirit still lingers in the corridors, haunting the institution. On one ominous night, a medical student who was working late in the hospital began to perceive peculiar and eerie sounds emanating from one of the hallways. He managed to capture this eerie experience on video. It is said that the ghost of this doctor is often heard wandering through the hospital's halls during the late hours, and at times, it is known to play tricks like flicking the lights on and off in patient rooms. Teachers play a crucial role in not only imparting knowledge but also serving as role models for the children they educate. In an unfortunate incident involving Kimberly Cotes, a school teacher from Oklahoma, she showed up to her elementary school classroom on the first day intoxicated. This unusual situation led to her being summoned to the principal's office, akin to how misbehaving students are called in. So, um, just observing you in the classroom, it looks like something's off a little bit. And so I've asked uh, Officer Dean to come in here and visit with the has you, you know, um, have you taken anything that's, you know, do you have a prescription for anything that maybe you have taken today that just seems like you're not the same person that I talked to this morning? The school administration invited a police officer to be present as they questioned the teacher regarding any substances she might have ingested. Initially, she denied having taken anything, but then provided false information about having consumed anxiety medication. She haven't taken anything while you were at school? No. Have you taken any sort of medication today? I'm sorry, what? Have you taken any medication today? I did take some medication this morning for my anxiety. Is that a prescription? Because you've changed your story a little bit. Now yeah, you said it was last night. Yeah. Well, I took one last night, and then I took one this morning because my anxiety was really, like... Eventually, she admitted to having consumed alcohol, but claimed it was the previous night and not while she was at school. Did you drink something while you were here at school? Not while I was at school. When did you drink something? Last night. I, I, I wouldn't bring it into the school. Okay. Are you going to blow double zeros? I don't know. 
You should know. If you hadn't drank anything, you should blow zeros. If you drank something recently, you're, it's going to show. To ascertain her level of intoxication, a breathalyzer test was administered, and the result indicated that her blood alcohol content was twice the legal limit. He blew two times the legal limit. I did? Yeah. That's a Diet Coke. Is there anything like liquor in it? Nope. So if I go into the classroom, am I going to find anything else? This confirms that she had consumed a substantial amount of alcohol that morning, and it couldn't be attributed to residual alcohol from the previous night. You want to tell me the truth? How much you had to drink? I, I drank last night. There's no way you drank last night. Well, I did drink last night. A field sobriety test was conducted as well, further informing her state of intoxication. You drank recently. Yeah, she's intoxicated. How's she? Considering her condition, the school needed to arrange for someone to pick her up, and she faced the prospect of being arrested for driving under the influence, DUI, if she attempted to operate a vehicle. Do you have anybody that's there that could come pick you up? Um, um, my husband's still, he's still at school working. I, I don't want you to call him. Well, I can't let you leave. If you leave, you're going to get arrested. Yeah, I'm going to rush you for DUI. So I need somebody to come pick you up. Come. During the meeting, she was presented with limited options, either face potential termination of her employment or take the more honorable route of resignation. So, so what happens? So what happens then, Mr. Ogle? Well, my recommendation to the board is going to be to terminate you because you're under the influence or you can resign. These alternatives were clearly explained to her during the meeting. What? I'm, I'm we, we think that you drank today. Not 3 a.m. We think that you've drank since you've been at school. And I don't believe you're being honest with us. Okay, I drank on the way to work. Okay. I, I, I'm glad that you told us that. Okay. Um, we'll still discuss tomorrow. I, I went to work here. I, 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 I went to work here. In the end, due to her repeated falsehoods, Cotes was placed under arrest and transported to the police station, despite her pleas and tears. Officer, please. Quit. I'm done. I tried to be nice. No. I'm done. Okay. To prevent the students from witnessing their teacher in handcuffs, the arrest was discreetly carried out at the back of the school. Hey, Spencer, if I write a ticket, can you run it back up there here and deliver what you were doing? Yeah, okay. district. Oh, yeah, we do a district? District. Okay. Never mind, I'm going to do a district. In September 2023, Few stories garnered more attention than the 13-day manhunt for Daniello Cavalcante. This Brazilian national had been convicted of the murder of his girlfriend and managed to escape from the Chester County prison on August 31st by squeezing between two walls. He then ventured into the wooded area between Lancaster and Philadelphia, where his plan was to steal a truck and make his way to either Canada or Puerto Rico. Despite an exhaustive manhunt, Cavalcante skillfully evaded capture for almost two weeks. During this time, he survived by consuming watermelon and drinking from forest streams to sustain himself. On multiple occasions, he came perilously close to being apprehended. Surveillance cameras captured him more than once, and he even faced gunfire from a homeowner after pilfering a rifle from the homeowner's garage. He recounted a hair-raising encounter with a police officer who nearly stumbled upon him when he was hiding. Finally, on the morning of September 13th, law enforcement stumbled upon the fugitive while he was asleep and a police dog was successful in subduing him. What adds an extraordinary twist to the story is the fact that Cavalcante employed the same method and escaped from the same location as a previous inmate in Chester County Prison. Switching gears to a rather unsettling topic that can surely diminish your appetite, the presence of a firearm can have that effect. In this particular incident, a subway restaurant in Oklahoma City was operating its usual business serving customers in the ordinary course of a day. However, a man wearing a green shirt significantly disrupted the scene when he approached the counter, leaping over it to confront the young employees working there. The workers promptly took evasive action, dropping to the floor as the man was armed and appeared to pose a potential threat. This response aligns with the best course of action for individuals employed in the food or retail industry because no job is worth risking one's life. 
particularly when the wages typically range around $10 or $11 an hour. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant, friends.